Now we'll have a look at the lateral ventricles. In this specimen, as you can see here, you can see the pons here. So that's the midbrain. That's the pons. So this is anterior. Here is the genu, the rostrum, the lamina terminalis. This is the body. That's the splenium posteriorly. And this is the thalamus extending posteriorly and posterior laterally. This part is called the pulvin arch. This is the thalamic adhesion. This is the hypothalamic sulcus. This is the interventricular foramen. And this region is the hypothalamus. So what I want to show you here in this specimen, you can see the aqueduct. The third ventricle continues into the aqueduct. This is the tectum, the superior colliculus, the inferior colliculus. This is the aqueduct. This is the tegmentum of the midbrain. So if you look at this specimen, in this specimen, the septum pellucidum has been removed and the phonics in this region has also been removed. So you see this cavity going laterally. So that is part of the lateral ventricle. So the lateral ventricle, this is the midline, the median point where you have the third ventricle. The lateral ventricle extends laterally into the hemisphere. The part of the lateral ventricle which extends into the frontal lobe, which I'm showing you right now, this cavity is the anterior horn. And now the lateral ventricle comes posteriorly below the corpus callosum forming the body of the lateral ventricle and then it comes down at this point inferior to the splenium and then it goes posteriorly as you can see here so the lateral ventricle is extending posteriorly into the occipital lobe and this is the posterior horn then the rest of the lateral ventricle is extending inferiorly and laterally into the temporal lobe. The temporal lobe has been dissected out from here. So you can see the extension of the lateral ventricle going into the temporal lobe and this forms the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. So you have the anterior horn, you have the body, you have the posterior horn, you have the inferior horn. And in this region you see a triangular area, a nice triangle with a base here and two sides and the base here. So this triangular region is the union of the posterior part of the anterior horn, anterior part of the posterior horn and posterior part of the inferior horn. So you can see this region where all the three horns are joining together. So the anterior horn and the posterior horn they are almost in the same plane, in the same vertical or the sagittal plane and the temporal horn it moves laterally away from the sagittal plane. So it's para sagittal or parasagitum. And if you look at this region now, the anterior horn coming to this part, this is the area called the body. So this part is coming and continuing as the inferior horn. This part is continuing as the posterior horn. So this triangular region, okay, this is called the trigone. It's also called the collateral trigone. So you can see this area. Okay, so that is an area, it's a confluence, it's an atrium. It's the confluence of all the three components of the lateral ventricle. So the anterior horn, the posterior horn, the inferior horn. So you can see all that. And this is the pulvinar of the thalamus. Lateral to the thalamus. Now if you look inside, I'm opening this part. Can you see that swelling? Okay. This swelling, see this part is swollen and it has a groove on the lateral side, it has a groove on the medial side. This swollen area going right up to this point, this is the caudate nucleus. So that is the head of the caudate nucleus lying partly in the floor and partly in the inferolateral region of the anterior horn. So this is the anterior horn. This formed the floor of the anterior horn, that formed the lateral part of the anterior horn. So the caudate nucleus extends from the medial part and goes right up to the lateral part. So that's the caudate nucleus. And between the thalamus and the caudate nucleus, can you see a blood vessel here? 
this is the thalamus striate vein passing along that groove so that's the thalamus striate groove and the thalamus striate vein and that is the groove which demarcates the difference between the thalamus and the caudate nucleus the caudate nucleus that's the head of the caudate nucleus this is the body of the caudate nucleus and you can see the caudate nucleus descend all the way inferior so that part forms the tail so this part of the caudate nucleus extends into the temporal lobe and it ends in it ends at a part which is very close to the temporal pole it ends in a nuclear mass which is called the amygdaloid nuclear complex so you can see the outline of the caudate nucleus you can see it here so this is the part of the lateral ventricle which can be very clearly seen so the anterior horn the body the posterior horn this is the part of the inferior horn and you can see some of the relations this relation i've shown you the thalamus striate vein the thalamus striate groove the caudate nucleus lateral to that region this is the roof of the lateral ventricle formed by the fornix by the septum pellucidum and by the corpus callosum so that forms the roof as you go posteriorly then the splenium forms the roof and also part of the fornix which is going in this region if you go laterally that lateral part is in relation to the forceps major so the the splenium if you take a coronal section which you can see here now in this specimen if you look at this specimen so these are the two sides this is the parietal region front to parietal region this is the temporal lobe this is the sagittal sulcus here superior longitudinal sulcus this is the corpus callosum this is the forceps minor corpus callosum here this is also corpus callosum part of this okay this is corpus callosum and as you can see these are the two anterior horns of the lateral ventricle and this part is going into the temporal lobe so this is part of the inferior horn so if you look at the midline that's the midline in a coronal section the the two anterior horns are very close to the midline they are basically paramedian but if you come down to the temporal region you can see the inferior horns are projecting laterally so they'll go more laterally okay that is the this is the lateral sulcus this is the insula cortex the insula the insula lobe these two parts are called the opercular part and in this region you can see the two lateral ventricles in between is the septum pellucidum you can see the two fornices here they call the columns of the fornix they come together this is the caudate nucleus you can see the caudate nucleus here so the caudate nucleus forms the lat the floor of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle and below that as described in the books are two other structures so you have the stria terminalis okay so that is described but you can't see it here and the anterior commissure so the anterior commissure is located here above that is the stria terminalis which is a fiber bundle belonging to the limbic system and here is the caudate nucleus this part is the thalamus and here is a small part of the third ventricle you can see the third ventricle in the middle that's the third ventricle so that's the interventricular sulcus uh, sorry the foramen so it's going from the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle passing here and communicating with the third ventricle and here is the opening on this side so that's the interventricular foramen in this specimen which is a coronal section then this is a specimen let's have a look at this one now you will see it in a little more detail this is a horizontal section almost a horizontal section so now in this section what you can see this is the septum pellucidum the two columns of the fornix this is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle so the roof of the lateral ventricle anterior horn uh, in this case the anterior wall because the roof has been cut off so you can't see the roof but you can see the anterior wall so the anterior limit of the lateral ventricle is 
the corpus callosum. The genu and the rostrum of the corpus callosum can be seen. So that's the lateral ventricle, the anterior horns. And this is the interventricular foramen, interventricular foramen leading to the third ventricle. And if you look at this region, you can see the thalamus bulging into the third ventricle. So now the third ventricle is a midline slit into which the two thalami are bulging in. And the massa intermedia or the thalamic adhesion is here. This, this structure, connecting structure, this thick structure which you can see here, that's the thalamic adhesion. Okay, from here to here, this whole thing. Then this is the third ventricle. Now in this section what has happened, because if you look at it from this view, the lateral ventricle goes up like this and it extends into the occipital lobe as the posterior horn and it extends into the temporal lobe as the inferior horn. Now since we have cut it like this, so you can see part of the anterior horn and now you can see the two temporal horns of the inferior horns. This is the posterior horn coming back. That's the posterior horn, this part. These two are the inferior horns and they're going into the temporal lobe. So that's the posterior horn. Uh, sorry, the, 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 the inferior horn. And if you look at the relationships, passing lateral to the inferior horn is a bundle of fibers. This is part of the optic radiation. And this is what we call as the capitum. So that forms the lateral wall of the inferior horn in this region. And it also forms the lateral wall of the posterior horn, but we, which you cannot see in this one, in this specimen. So that's part. And here, you can see a band of white matter, which is, this is the splenium of the corpus callosum. Here there is a band, which is, now this is the posterior horn. That's the inferior horn, that's the posterior horn. So passing inferomedial to the posterior horn is a bundle of white matter. These are commissural fibers extending from the splenium. So this is, okay, that's part of the forceps minor. And this is moving medial to the posterior horn. The tapetum is going on to this side, which you can see here, this region. Okay. Now, if you look inside in the posterior horn, if you look inside, you see medially there is a hump, there's a raised part, and laterally there's another hump. So those, those two have been described in your book. One is the protrusion of the calcarine sulcus, which is here, which goes in and pushes this area to form a fold. And that's called the calcar avis or the calcar avis. Okay, and this part is related to the tapetum, which is raising a region of this. So you can see these two at the floor. So these are also described in your books. This two part, these two parts. The yes, the bulb. So that's the bulb, which you can see. So both can be seen here. So that's the calcaravis and that's the bulb. So you can see both. And there's a groove in between. Okay? So these are the so-called details of this region. And if you look inside, you can see the choroid plexus. I'm holding it now. That's the choroid plexus of the posterior horn, which is continuing into the temporal horn or the inferior horn. This one is actually, okay, this is like this. So we have cut this horizontally and we are removing this. So now you see the roof of the lateral ventricle. The two anterior horns, the two posterior horns, this is the occipital lobe. So you can see the two posterior horns. And you can see the splenium of the corpus callosum and the forceps major. You can see the rostrum and the genu, not the rostrum, the genu of the corpus callosum. This is the forceps minor. And you can see the extension. So you can see the roof of the anterior horn. And you can see the roof of the posterior horn. You can see the optic radiation. You can see it here. 
the Sukhoth, Tapitam in this region. We'll have a look at the temporal lobe. Let's see. This hasn't been opened up. We have another one. Yes, this one. Okay. Now this is the occipital lobe. So this is how the hemisphere is. This is the temporal lobe. So occipital lobe, temporal lobe from the lateral sulcus region. This has been dissected out. The corpus callosum should be here. And that's the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe here. So this dissection is done partly horizontally, partly sagittally. And then this part has been dug out. Now, this, now you're looking from the front. So you can see the temporal pole, part of the temporal pole region on this side. This is the midline. So this is more laterally placed. And now you can see this is the, the trigone, the collateral trigone. This is the posterior horn going inside. And this is the inferior horn coming into the temporal lobe. So let's look at the inferior horn from the top. So this is the superior view. You can see the phonix. Okay, that's the body of the phonix. There's the alveus, there's the fimbria. This is a part of the phonix. So you can see the phonix arising from... Now you see this. This is the parahippocampal gyrus. This is the inferior surface of the temporal lobe. Lateral, medial. So this is the medial part of the, the temporal lobe on the medial side. This is the parahippocampal gyrus, the parahippocampal sulcus. And that rotates. So the parahippocampal gyrus, it goes up. And inside... You can see this structure, this large mass. It, it looks like a foot, like a paw, like a paw of a lion. Okay? This part, paw, in, in fact, in Latin it's called pes. So this is called the pes hippocampi or pes hippocampus. This structure is called the hippocampus. Okay, so now, lateral to the hippocampus, you can see this groove. This is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, and that's where it terminates anteriorly. So this is the inferior horn, or the temporal horn, of the lateral ventricle, which lies lateral to the hippocampus and to the pes hippocampi. And in the pes, you can see these grooves, as if there are these toes, it looks like toes. So this looks like a foot. Yes, this is part of the limbic lobe, okay? This is related to, primarily to olfactory stimuli. Okay, and this moves and then this continues as the fimbria, the alveus, and then the body of the phonix, which goes up and then comes anterior. So you can see all that. So this is the inferior one. Hey, you can see that. I'm not sure whether you can see the furrows here. That's the dentate gyrus. Campus. This is the pesipocampi or pesipocampus. This is the, the phonix beginning, the fimbria, the alveus. And on this part is this region. And this shows you the furrowed dentate gyrus. So these are all parts of the limbic system or the so called limbic lobe, a part of the limbic lobe itself. Now this is the part where the inferior horn is continuing as the posterior horn in the occipital lobe. And you can see the choroid plexus here. So that's the choroid plexus.